Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, April 1st. Look at your birthday balloons lurking there over oh, your left shoulder. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not? It wasn't intentional. We just accidentally left them there, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. That, it's like, that turned out. There you Happy go. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. Th thank you. It was gorgeous balloon. You're welcome. You're thank welcome. More to come in this hour. Yes. You know, we talk about children's book drives all the time, and Gun Auto Group here in San Antonio and all their dealerships has set up one specifically for our service members overseas. So it's called Operation Paperback and it's a national nonprofit organization whose volunteers collect gently read books and send them to American troops. Uh, this is deployed overseas like Mark was saying as well as veterans recuperating in VA hospitals. So books may be dropped off at all five gun auto San Antonio dealerships. Um, you can even drop it off a touch free at their service center drive throughs. Mm -hmm. Here's more. Oh, there's there's the locations. There you go. And then we'll, we can tell you um, about more about what they're looking for. Yeah, so uh, it's you know saying that your former favorites can be shipped out. Uh, the most sought after books here are current affairs, adult fiction, mystery, horror, thrillers, true crime, biographies, military history. So you know, a wide wide range of books here. Uh, also, puzzle books, mm -hmm. uh, National Geographic magazine, uh, graphic comics are also welcome. They said interesting here. They put yeah. please no romance books. Yeah, that, that's interesting. But it'll be shipped to our soldiers, sailors, airmen, coasties, and marines all around the world. And again, uh, you can come into the showrooms to drop off your donations. And like Mark said, if you're more comfortable doing contact free, you can go to the service center drive through So let's all take part here in Operation Paperback uh, at Gun Auto Group. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. Four people, including a child, died in a mass shooting at an office complex in Orange, California yesterday. Police have a suspect in custody. A motive is still under investigation. The Texas Department of Public Safety says Trooper Chad Walker has died after he was shot by a driver in Mejia last Friday. The 37-year-old trooper is survived by his wife and four children. Johnson & Johnson says as many as 15 million COVID-19 vaccine doses were ruined after some ingredients accidentally got mixed up at a plant in Baltimore. The company says it's still on track to deliver 24 million doses this month. San Antonio City Council voted to approve a COVID-19 vaccine registry for people 65 and older. Assistant City Manager Dr. Colleen Bridger says it could take three to four weeks to develop and open the registry. President Joe Biden will hold his first cabinet meeting today to promote his new infrastructure plan. The meeting will take place in the East Room instead of the cabinet room to allow for social distancing. The Texas Senate signed off on a voting bill early this morning. The bill would limit extended early voting hours, prohibit drive through voting and make it illegal for local election officials to proactively send voters applications to vote by mail. People enrolled for the Affordable Care Act can start accessing new premium subsidies on the federal exchange today. The health insurance subsidies are funded by the $1.9 trillion pandemic relief package President Biden signed into law last month. The 2021 Major League Baseball season gets underway today. All 30 teams will start on the same day for the first time since 1968. It's April Fool's Day, a day where people and companies become pranksters. One company pulled an early stunt earlier this week. Volkswagen said Monday it was changing its name to Volkswagen, but later admitted it was a joke. And that's today's 9 and 9. Yes, but we have a note. Uh, one of our directors, Don, his mm -hmm. nickname is Donnie Baseball for a reason, uh, said that one of those games scheduled today has been postponed due to weather. Uh, my Baltimore Orioles at Red Sox has been postponed due to weather. Hmm. Hmm. Don. <laughs> Speaking of what, that's no April Fool's joke, I promise. <laughs> Speaking of weather, let's go outside with live cam. Justin is here. We were planning, anticipating, some cooler temperatures this morning just simply did not materialize. It was it was cool. It was not cold. We only got down into the low 50s here in San Antonio because we had cloud cover and that that made a difference. But some places there in the hill country did get down into the 30s this morning. Here's a look at the headlines. Mostly sunny, a bit breezy today, but not as windy as yesterday. Increasing clouds tomorrow and then lots of clouds over the weekend. We could see a shower on Saturday, but 
I don't think it's going to interrupt anybody's plans. Just know that uh, there could be a few sprinkles, maybe a light shower Saturday, maybe even Sunday morning. Temperatures right now, 48 degrees, Bernie Stage, 49 Boulevard, 54 in New Braunfels. We just jumped out of the 30s there in the Hill Country. It's uh, 48 Rock Springs, but 57 Pleasanton, 61 down there in Katua, one of the warm spots. And the forecast for today, we should be up around 72. Really a pretty gorgeous day. Uh, winds again a little breezy 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll take a, a closer inspection of the weekend forecast coming up here in just a few minutes guys. All right, thank you, Justin. Right now we're looking at uh, slowdowns there at 410 and Cherry Bridge. It appears to be in the eastbound lanes. And top stories we're following today. It's been three years since the San Antonio woman was stabbed to death. This morning, San Antonio police are asking you to help them find the person who did it. This is a picture of the victim. Police say Caitlin McDonald died back on March 24th of 2017 after someone stabbed her in the chest. It happened in the 3700 block of East Commerce. Investigators interviewed several witnesses, but no one could identify the suspect. Crime Stoppers is offering a $5,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest. You can call 210-224-STOP. One Austin man arrested last month for a accident that killed eight immigrants has his first federal pre-trial hearing today. That hearing is about to take place right now in a Del Rio federal courtroom. Authorities say 24 year old Sebastian Tovar was being chased by DPS troopers when he hit another truck head on about 30 miles north of Del Rio of the nine immigrants in the truck. He was driving. He was only the one that survived there. Um, Tovar is facing several federal charges. We'll have more on what was discussed in that pretrial hearing in our later newscasts. Governor Greg Abbott will hold a press conference in Westlaco later this morning to discuss Operation Lone Star. The governor launched the operation last month to, quote, combat the smuggling of people and drugs into Texas, end quote. The governor will be joined by Texas Department of Public Safety Director Colonel Steve McGraw and members of the National Border Patrol Council. The press conference is happening today at 11.30 a.m. We will carry it live on KSET.com, and we will also bring you an update on the news at noon. The Gordon Harvin Foundation helping to get the COVID-19 vaccine out to the community. The vaccine distribution taking place at Morgan's Wonderland today. Registration is required, and to register, email information at Gordon. Hartman.com. Actually, that's the email address info at GordonHartman.com. Priority will be given to children 16 and older with special needs. We have all that information on our website at KSET.com. A reminder, today is the last day to register to vote in the May 1st city elections. People will vote on the mayor's race and 10 city council seats. Voters will also decide the fate of two propositions. One is aimed at repealing the police department's collective bargaining right. The other deals with a change to the city charter. And right now on KSAT.com, we have steps to make sure you're registered to vote. We also have a look at a sample ballot. In your morning headlines, more troubling video from the border and school police getting a little extreme with a five year old. A roadside delivery and it's not dinner, a new meaning to take your friends shopping, taking your friends shopping rather. David Sears is here. Good morning. If you are a true Texan, you're going to love that story. So we'll have that okay. for you in just a second. But first, we're going to start with this. Some disturbing video from the border involving two children. That is a human smuggler sitting on top of a 14 foot wall, dangling a little girl above the ground and then just dropping her. The video is from U.S. Customs and Border Protection. It's night vision from the U.S.-Mexico border in New Mexico. That child just lies there for a few seconds before she's able to move and then get up. The smuggler grabs even a smaller child, dangles that child, then lets her go. And then the guy on the wall just throws something over the wall to the ground. The smuggler jumps back down on the Mexico side and you can see him and another person run off. Now, according to CBP, a Border Patrol agent in Santa Teresa, New Mexico, watched this all happen on security camera. She got a hold of the agents that were near that location, and when they arrived, they found the two children, a five-year-old and a three-year-old. According to CBP, they are sisters from Ecuador. They were taken to a local hospital to get checked out. They are okay. They are now at a temporary holding facility waiting to be placed at another location by Health and Human Services. Here. That's the sound of an upset little boy in the hands of two school police officers at a Montgomery County school in Washington, D.C. It happens that the officers are, it appears that the officers are 
threatening the five-year-old, and that's not sitting too well with the vice president of the Montgomery County NAACP. She wants an investigation and two officers to face some disciplinary action, along with the staff who were also involved in that incident with the young boy. Cherie Brunson says at least that she's pleased with body cam footage, so there is proof that something needs to be done. And in this case, we we saw um, the candor was captured, and and that's that's what's really troubling. What happened with this child is um, really a testament to our failure, um, to our failure as a county. The district says staff members have taken crisis prevention training. Not good news this morning from the weekly job report. Claims from last week took a huge jump back up over 700,000. The number was up 61,000 to 719. That is a signal that employers are still cutting jobs. All right, it looks like an ordinary traffic stop in central Florida. Nope, nothing ordinary about this. And the guy's speeding for good reason. His wife is about to have a baby. Her contractions were five minutes apart. The sooner than you think to be dead. And the troopers got her on a blanket in the grassy area on the side of the road. And in a few minutes, the baby girl decided, eh, it's good enough spot. Father brought her into the world. The trooper took over and then patted her on the back to clear her lungs. Ambulance finally got there. Mom and baby got taken to the hospital. Dad and little sister followed in the car again. The good news, mom and baby are healthy. Dad didn't get a ticket. And finally, this is what happens when you take away all the hitching posts. No place to park your stud, so you just keep riding. Yep, you just go in the store and start shopping on the back of your horse. Cowboy and his trusty steed did a little shopping at a gas station convenience store in Bozeman, Montana. The company kindly asked the guy to at least dismount and leave his trusty steed outside before he decides to shop in their store next time. Wow. That's kind of your idea of a drive through isn't it, Dan? Yeah. Seriously? Perfect. That's how you do it. You don't even get off. You got to pick up some items. Because yeah. the real cowboys can, like, lean over and get stuff even wow. from the bottom the shelf bottom without shelf. ever getting off the horse. That's true Texas talent. And then talent. if you need to get something high on the shelf, you stand on the saddle ah, and reach up there and grab it. There you it. go. Hey, well, the, I'm already impressed that the horse didn't knock over anything, at, yeah. least, at least in the video. Well trained. Yeah. That's there why you carry saddle bags. There you go. Thank See? you, David. Right now it's 910. We're about 55 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. One of the featured authors for the San Antonio Book Festival wrote a book about a war between the U.S. and China. Why he says he wants the Chinese president to read the book. Text dot statistics show Bear County has some of the highest numbers of distracted driving crashes, many of them ending with people dying. April's Distracted Driving Awareness Month. And after the break, our Samuel King will tell us about a new AAA initiative to make the roads safer. And let's take a look at the stocks on April 1st. Dow is up 63 points. We'll be right back. More traffic authority coverage now. Today marks the beginning of Distracted Driving Awareness Month. And Bear County has a dubious distinction when it comes to that issue. Our Samuel King joins us from the Traffic Lab with more this morning. Hey. Hi, good morning, uh, Mark and Stephanie. According to AAA Texas, Bear County has had the highest number of crashes and fatalities where distracted driver driving was a factor in recent years. And nationally, there's also been an increase by 9% in 2019. The last year, full statistics were available. So AAA Texas is launching a message with a PSA. Uh, don't drive intoxicated, don't drive intoxicated underscoring the message that distracted driving can be as dangerous as drunk driving. Joshua Zuber says there's even a hangover effect from using your phone while driving. The mind stays distracted for up to 27 seconds after using uh, smartphones or even uh, the voice to text vehicle infotainment systems to send text messages, make phone calls or update social media. And that even applies after you're stopped at a light, for instance, and you used to light. And a survey by AAA found that more than half of drivers admitted that they text or email while alone in the vehicle. So you see there what their message is. And they say that's even more likely among the age range of 25 to 34 year olds. So besides just putting the phone away while you're driving, AAA Texas advises things like pulling over if you need to respond to a text or call watching your navigation system before you head out so you already have it there and you don't need to do it while you're driving and also speaking up if the person with you're driving with is using the phone a little too much mark stephanie thank you very much sir admiral james stavridis believes that literature helped prevent a third world war breaking out between the united states and soviet union during the cold war 
However, he says there are very few books or films exploring the potentially disastrous outcomes of a war with China. That's the inspiration behind his new book, 2034, a novel of the next world war. The U.S. Navy veteran says rising tensions between the two nations caused him to look at history and write a cautionary tale for the future. He says countries should commit to diplomacy and international organizations like the U.N. or NATO to maintain peace. And more so, he hopes people read the book and realize how bad a war with China would be for everyone, which is also why he also wants Chinese President Xi Jinping to read his book. I hope he would read it and feel a similar sense that I do, that it would be a disaster for these two nations to stumble into a war. We still have time to avoid it. We can reverse engineer the direction events are headed right now, but it'll take effort from both sides. Admiral Stavridis is one of the featured authors this year at the San Antonio Book Festival. You can read more about his book and learn more about the Book Fest right here on KSET.com. As Justin joins us now, I'm scrolling through my Facebook feed here right before the show, and I see Texas Parks and Wildlife has posted their new uh, Cedar Fever license uh -oh. plate. Mm. It says, keep Texas sneezing at the bottom. And it says to check out the real deals, go to this other website. Uh. <laughs> so it's obviously in April, but the, the, the uh, custom plate says, achoo. Oh, that's, that's cute. C H E W. That's, that's uh, cute. That's, pretty that's, brilliant. A, that's a good April Fool's joke. Yeah. That's clever. <laughs> well, you know, and, and Oak. Gosh, it jumped mm -hmm. up today. It's at the highest level it's been so far this season, around 3,000. So just a heads up, we're going to start seeing that yellow stuff mm -hmm. everywhere. Yes, we are. Uh, March was not a great month for us when we're talking about rainfall. We only saw 58 hundredths of an inch of rain. That's not very good for March. We were about 1.73 inches below average. You see several days there where technically we got a trace of rainfall or some measurable rainfall, but it wasn't enough. I mean, these have all been really light rain events. The only one that was fairly significant was on the 23rd, where we got about a fourth, uh, four tenths of an inch of rain. So March wasn't great. We had a dry winter. We need something to change. And that's still not showing up in the forecast. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's just the way it's looking right now. Hopefully as we get later into maybe April, May, we'll start to get some more dynamic systems coming through Texas. Here's a look at the time lapse. Beautiful sunrise this morning. We had some clouds earlier, as we mentioned off the top of the show. That kept temperatures up just a little bit this morning. And we're starting to warm up now. 54, dew point is at 30. Because we have dry air, you'll see those temperatures rise pretty rapidly today. There's a look at the lows this morning. It did get cold in Kerrville. They had clear skies here, down to 35. But look at the difference the clouds made. The edge of the clouds is about right there. You can tell the difference with the low temperatures. We only got down to 53 here in San Antonio, 55 in Pleasanton, and now we're rebounding into the 50s, 54, the uh, airport 43, Kerrville 48 right now in Rock Springs. And the forecast high temperatures today, really nice. 72 is what we're expecting here in town, 67 in New Braunfels, 70 in Hondo. Dew point tracker. Shows that the air will be extremely dry today. Still pretty dry tomorrow, but we will start to see some increase in clouds Friday afternoon. And then by the weekend, there's enough moisture there, enough moisture return where we're starting to see some cloud cover. We've also got a little disturbance that will work through that could generate a shower or two. Let's look at the visible satellite picture and you see where those clouds are shifting south, but slowly. So San Antonio has cleared out some, but Pleasanton, Catua, Beeville over to Eagle Pass, still looking at partly to mostly cloudy skies. This is part of that frontal boundary, which stretches all the way up into parts of the Northeast and New England. And you see some of the weather there around Baltimore, which Mark mentioned that they uh, they postponed the game today, the, uh, the baseball game for opening day. Water vapor shows we've got an area of low pressure off the coast of California. This is the one that will move in our direction this weekend and by Saturday. The models do generate a few showers. I think it's going to be pretty dry, so at least somewhat dry at the surface. So I don't expect much rain, but I can't rule out a shower on Saturday. Even Sunday morning, we may see a little bit of that with some fog and drizzle. So your Easter weekend is going to be somewhat cloudy. And for your egg hunt forecast on Easter Sunday, we'll see a high right around 72 on Sunday with some morning fog and drizzle, as we mentioned, and mostly cloudy. There could see We could see a few peaks of sun late in the day. 71 tomorrow, 68 Saturday, 72 Sunday, as we mentioned, and then 80s return next week. It'll be more spring-like next week with a chance of thunderstorms by Wednesday, guys. Thank you, Justin. Not too bad.
Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Texas lawmakers working to prevent another power crisis, but critics say the legislation that's advancing just isn't enough. We're going to talk with Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune about this legislation. Kids are kids. That's the message Children's Methodist Hospital is wanting to remind families and the community of, and they're using these backpacks to do so, and they're through a nonprofit. Just ahead on GMSA at 9, we'll have all the details. 924, a nonprofit is helping bring joy to kids of all ages at Methodist Children's Hospital. Dancing While Cancering was founded by Scott and Pammy Kramer after they lost their three year old daughter Maddie to a rare form of cancer. Now they have made it their life's mission to spread joy for newly diagnosed pediatric cancer patients through backpacks. Alicia Beretta, live outside Methodist Children's Hospital, one of the newest partners to the organization. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, you guys. Well, um, unfortunately, this is such a sad reality for so many families, not just here in San Antonio, but across the nation and across the world. And we have a child life specialist with us, Miss Jenna Painter. She's working for the Methodist Children's Hospital. You work with these children and you know how much this can affect them. But you say that kids are still kids. They are. One thing that I've noticed since working here is kids are so resilient. You know, these kids come through our doors very sick a lot of times, and I'm just in awe of their resiliency and just how much joy they can find no matter their circumstances. And so now this is the 20th partnership, Dancing While Cancering. They're partnering up with hospitals across the nation. This hospital is one of them. And these backpacks, you say that already they have been such a big asset for children. Yes, so Dancing While Cancering has gifted us with these backpacks. These are to be given to children who are newly diagnosed with cancer. And so these backpacks are full of different things to distract them and bring joy to them during their hospital stay. They're also full of things that can decorate their hospital rooms. So there are streamers, there are like paper disco balls, there's even a wireless speaker in here so they can jam out to some music and kind of just distract themselves from everything that's going on. So this organization was actually founded in honor of Maddie Kramer, a three-year-old who's battling a rare form of cancer. So all the items that children will find in that bag, those are things that really made Maddie happy and her family feel more at home in the hospital room. Because like you mentioned, many times parents come in here and they don't know that they're gonna spend a day or like you said, weeks or months. Absolutely, absolutely. These kids come in through our emergency department, never, never guessing that they would have cancer and so a lot of times they're here without without toiletries, without um, even pajamas to wear. And so we're so thankful for organizations like Dancing While Cancering that provide these essentials and provide things to help them have a little fun along the way. Wonderful. Jenna, thank you so much for sharing more of that mission. We'll have the full story today at the News on Noon. And Steph, I just want to take a moment to say happy birthday. I'm wishing you many more. Aw, thank you, Alicia. I appreciate it. Thanks, Alicia. <laughs> much more ahead on GMSA at 9. Go Spurs go! The silver and black finally get a win at home. Yay! Against the Kings. So David and RJ will join us with the highlights. The Department of Health and Human Services wants to pay you to design a face mask that doesn't fog glasses or cause discomfort. We'll tell you how to enter the contest. And new emails out by the Texas Tribune over the eyes of Texas controversy. Alana Rocha with the Tribune will talk to us about how the emails show how the University of Texas at Austin was pressured to keep the eyes of Texas song. Texas lawmakers want to prevent another power crisis, but critics say the legislation that's advancing doesn't go far enough. And restrictions on voting could tighten under a Republican bill advanced by a Texas Senate committee. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune joins us now to talk about this legislation and more. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start with the power crisis. Work underway to prevent this from happening again. However, critics say the legislation that's advancing doesn't go quite far enough to do that. What do they cite as flaws in the legislative fix? Yeah, the, it doesn't account for climate change uh, or doesn't account for it enough when it's, you know, setting certain temperature goals as far as the equipment being, you know, up to snuff to, to weather through. Uh, also, the fact that much of the changes listed in the bill would fall under or fall to uh, the Public Utility Commission uh, to, you know, oversee those changes and regulate them, mandate them when they're not planning to increase funding for the organization or for the agency. Also, that this agency just disbanded its oversight arm uh, just last year. Uh, so a whole host of things and the fact that it would also fall to regulators and oftentimes they are too close to the industry they regulate. So we could be back here 
uh, again next session or, you know, in 10 years for the next winter storm potentially. And Alana, new today by the Texas Tribune, new emails provided to the Tribune show a prominent Longhorn alumnus joined forces with rich UT Austin alumni to help pressure the university to keep the eyes of Texas. The new emails reveal more powerful donors and alumni than were previously known, mobilized on the controversy surrounding the origins of the alma mater. What did you find? Well, our uh, education or higher education reporter, Kate McGee, uh, had put in an open rec records request to UT uh, requesting emails uh, regarding uh, this topic and, you know, the, the racist origins of the, the song that's become so controversial. Uh, and she reported on that. Uh, the UT president came out and said, you know, it's just a few emails, a few donors. And then when we questioned or she questioned uh, some missing records with the open records request, they they provided her some 550 additional emails showing about 75 wealthy donors, uh, you know, exchanging several emails about this topic, including the discussion of, uh, you know, forming a diverse committee to study the issue and, you know, interesting timing uh, shortly thereafter you did see the ut president announce such a committee uh, that you know many months later deemed that the song had a racist origins but not you know overly racist intent um basically saying that the, the song is fine uh, to stick around so uh we didn't get a lot of comment from a lot of the people featured in her story but a spokesperson said for UT said that one had nothing to do with the other as far as influencing the president on uh, informing that committee. Um, moving on now, Senate Bill 7 will make sweeping changes to Texas voting, but by Wednesday night, some of the most controversial parts of the legislation were stripped out uh, during lengthy floor debate. What can you tell us? Yeah, it was actually Thursday this morning that uh, our Alexa Uda uh, filed that story. I had 30 some amendments, lots of discussion. A lot of the um, provisions, if you will, uh, that stuck around in this bill mirror what you saw local elections officials enact uh, last November to make voting safer and more convenient during the pandemic, like drive through voting, uh, you know, extended hours during early voting. Uh, those two things, uh, among others, will now be banned if this uh, bill gets to the governor's desk as is and is signed into law. And Alana, also new on the trip, Cornyn and Cruz's voting records on Biden cabinet picks. What can you tell us about this? Yeah, I mean, in short, it seems that uh, the senior senator, John Cornyn, uh, tended to vote to approve uh, Biden's cabinet picks um, much more times or many more times than uh, Cruz did. So we have a, a very visual breakdown now with our uh, D.C. reporter, Abby Livingston. All right. The Alana Rocher from the Texas Tribune. Thank you, Alana. Thank you. And taking a look out with live cam, we're at 54 degrees right now, right, Justin? That is correct. And Steph, I'd be remiss if I didn't wish you happy birthday. Aw, thank you. It was the last one, but happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Uh, for your birthday, we're going to give you some oak ball, I'm sorry to say. Oh, that's uh, cool. Isn't that nice? <laughs> it's I'm all right. That was, that's a really neat gift. Uh, 3,740. It's in the high category, uh, the highest it's been so far this season. We have seven Howardsons on the list today. Pretty incredible. In fact, it sort of hangs off the bottom of your screen there. That's how many we've got. Mold, juniper, mulberry, pine, grass, hackberry, all there today. It's that season. As you look across the country, it's chilly, especially up there across uh, the Great Lakes. 28 Chicago, 28 Cleveland, 27 in Minneapolis. Much of the country feeling the effects of this last front. But uh, we'll see things moderate here today. Temperatures will jump back into the 70s this afternoon. Here's what the forecast looks like. 72 the high, mostly sunny. East Julie winds 10 to 15 miles per hour and breezy. We've got a golf tournament going on this weekend. We'll look at that forecast and another look at the Easter forecast here in just a couple minutes, guys. Steph said thanks. Thanks, Justin. For the, <laughs> it's for okay. The yeah. It's okay. Uh, we've got a closure right there to ramp at 10 and 35. Looks like SAPD is on the scene, some sort of incident, but uh, that ramp is closed. Sl slow going in that particular area. We'll try to keep you posted. Yay! We have something good to talk about today. The Spurs topple the Kings and get back on the winning track. David and RJ are here to break down the win and also talk about opening day oh, in Major yes. League Baseball. Oof. We are yeah. gonna one up Justin's gift and give you a Spurs <laughs> victory for your birthday. I like that Spurs better. Spurs victory, <laughs> no <laughs> call in. Hmm. Yeah. I'll take that, thank you very much. What a game last night.
What did we call him earlier? Well, I did it. I'm yeah, sorry. you went uh, you went down to uh, went, Katy Perry. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I said they're, 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 they're the cold. Katy Perry yeah. of the NBA. They're hot and they're cold. <laughs> they're yes and they're no. They're up and they're down. Like, right? Wow, you've, I'm you've shocked the lyrics. he knows that many of the lyrics. Wow. Exactly, yeah. I'm yeah, very appropriate. That too. That's stuck in my head for the rest of the day now. Yeah, Thanks, definitely. Katie. You're not going to get that one out. Um, no. So Spurs here taking on the Kings. This is the second time they played them in three games. And uh, I think the biggest thing here is that San Antonio came out early. They put their foot on the pedal and just didn't really let up for the entire game. Yeah. They didn't really did not have any lulls, maybe in the third quarter a little bit, but nice effort by the Spurs to get I think this early one. in the second quarter, it was tied at 30. Five, mm-hmm. and then the Spurs ended up with like a what a 16 point lead at halftime so they uh, pretty much dominated from them except for that one little low there in the third so a couple of quick stats for you to kind of stand out that you may not know of course DeMar DeRozan led with 26 points oh yeah mm-hmm. 12 of 20 but how about how about this stat you combine Jakob Pertle and Drew Eubanks you and you got 20 points and 19 rebounds how's <laughs> that for that position right there huh well, pretty, and actually, and, and DeMar was asked about Drew Eubanks after the game, and he said it's like watching him ride a bull. That's the way he plays. <laughs> <laughs> like if he's a, like an old school bull rider, the way he kind of gets up and down uh, the floor. But uh, this was a good win again uh, for the Spurs. And I think the big difference, again, the Kings did not shoot lights out from threes. We no. saw that the other day. They had 18 makes the other day. And yeah. in this game, they had only 11. The Spurs had 10. So uh, that was good stuff there for San Antonio. So a uh, nice win here for the Spurs as they, uh, they're they back on the court tonight again. But uh, this was a good one. Back-to-backs. For us, you know, to, to give one up the other night, um, you know, we, we had that fire under our belly to be able to execute the game plan better than what we did. There was no real significant changes there. We just had to play better. We had to do things better. Everybody doing their part. Um, that's when we had our best. It was unstoppable. And, you know, I just try to come out and set the tone tonight, um, being aggressive and take whatever the defense gave me. Yeah, he had a big night last night. And another big night for the for a lot of guys. Seven guys in double figures. Mm-hmm. All five starters in double figures. Yeah, That's and of good. course, uh, and of course, Patty Mills there received yeah. the uh, NBA Community Assist Award there prior to the game. So good stuff there for Patty for all the work that he's done out there in his uh, native Australia there for uh, the indigenous people. So Spurs, yeah, taking on the Hawks. Taking on the, Hawks. Yeah. Hey, the Hawks were hot for a while. They mm-hmm. won eight in a row, and then they've lost their four of their last five though, and they're coming off a loss to Phoenix. Yeah. This is a weird ago, schedule, so, though. They yeah. played the Kings last night and then Atlanta tonight. So, yeah. really, they, they could give things. Stephanie two gifts here. That would, last that would be great. I mean, I don't want to be greedy yeah. or yeah. anything, but go Spurs, go, Last's right? Why not? <laughs> and then tonight, yes. Why not you know, be we greedy? need them to be greedy. Yes, yeah. let's be yeah. greedy, Spurs. It's also uh, opening day in the majors. Everybody playing today, but two teams. We understand Baltimore at Boston is postponed. I just checked. They've got a cold rain in the Boston metro area this morning. Mm. Yes. No indoor stadium. No. no. <laughs> not a fan. Fenway. Definitely not. You don't want to turn Fenway, uh, Fenway. into an indoor venue. No, 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 yeah, no, no, definitely no. not. I, I think the biggest thing here, of course, is that there's a sense of normalcy here with uh, opening day. Uh, every team's expected to play yeah. 162 games. That's the plan. And we are supposed to get fans back inside yeah. some of the stadiums. Of course, the Rangers are going full capacity. Other teams like the Astros are 50%. 50%. Some are even less than that. Some are like down. I think Boston was going to be like 12% or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So, But it seems like every team is going to allow at least a few fans into the stadiums to watch. At least now, I think they're hoping by the end of the season that they're at least close, if not at full capacity. And- of, the, of their fans. So, and then, of course, some teams will be so bad they won't want fans in their fans. <laughs> <laughs> fans well, so there, there's always those teams. Yeah. So you don't really have to worry about social distancing because nobody wants to go to the game. Today. It was kind of cool to hear. Thanks social distance from by not going. Yeah. I know. It was kind of here, though, that opening day would have all teams for the first time since yeah. like 1968 yeah. playing on opening day itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's just a good vibe because I, you think about last season and they had this short, mm-hmm. condensed season. The playoffs were really weird. They're going back to a normal playoff format so it just is nice to just get back to a little bit of a as we said normalcy there with major league baseball because it is definitely a summer game and i think that uh, fans are going to be excited to uh, watch these teams back yeah and the good news is not a lot of covid news coming out of spring training yeah. so you didn't hear didn't hear a whole lot of uh 
stuff about that's about that. A great that sign. That's a great yeah. sign. So yeah. Okay. So hopefully things are getting back and you can hear the crack of the bat and play ball here. In <laughs> here we go. That's awesome. Hours. And the crowd goes wild, which would be the best part. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys. David, thank you guys. Right now it's 941. We are at 54 degrees. And you're watching GMSA at 9. Russian health officials created a COVID-19 vaccine for animals. Why they say protecting animals will also help protect humans against future mutations of the virus. And welcome back. It's 945. A COVID-19 vaccine for animals developed by Russia's Federal Center for Animal Health. Russian state media claims it's the world's first and only product for preventing COVID-19 in animals. Clinical trials began last October and the research involved dogs, cats, foxes, Arctic foxes, minks and other animals. Russian scientists say the use of this vaccine can prevent further mutations, which could potentially spread to humans. Last May, Denmark killed 17 million minks over concerns the animals were spreading a mutated form of coronavirus. The vaccine will likely go into mass production this month. While well, Russia claims their vaccine is the first for animals here in the U.S., the San Diego Zoo started vaccinating animals earlier this month. That vaccine was created by veterinary pharmaceutical company Zoets. The U.S. Department of Agriculture approved the shot for experimental use by the zoo. Masks come in different shapes and sizes, and now the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services is offering $500,000 in a mask design contest. Oh, wow, the department is looking for designs that address common complaints about masks. That includes discomfort, fogged glasses, difficulty reading facial expressions, and problems speaking through masks. The idea behind the initiative is to come up with an improved design that will encourage more people to wear them. You can submit designs now through April 21st on the HHS website. The department will select 10 designs for first round. Those people will split a $100,000 prize. As many as five prototypes will be selected in the final round, and those winners will split $400,000. It's very interesting. I know, uh, well, over this time, people have come up with a solution for, you know, one fix, but then they don't have the other fix. So, yeah, this will be interesting. Well, maybe uh, we'll be blessed in the sense that if we, we, we don't need them anymore, we don't yeah. we can work out all the kinks. That and, would be better. And, maybe yeah. this will be a good backup. <laughs> maybe, maybe yes. so. And we and there's possible we may always need them. So who knows? Yeah. 947, Justin is standing by with a look at uh, the Valero Texas Open, which begins today. Already oh, wow. people out there uh, yep. showing up at TPC. They've already teed off this morning. Some of the pros and it looks like uh, Jordan Spieth leading the way right now. Shocker. Yeah, he's, he's a good player, uh, but we've got some good weather. I'm, I'm guessing they're happy they didn't play yesterday because those winds were howling. Today it will be a little bit breezy, but certainly not like yesterday. We're expecting low 70s, mostly sunny today. They'll get a bit more cloud cover tomorrow. Still some uh, winds in the 5 to 15 mile per hour range and breezy on Saturday too. 20% chance of a shower on Saturday, cloudy and uh, maybe some fog and drizzle on Sunday morning. So it should be a pretty good final round uh, for the golfers or if you're heading out there to check out some golf. Well, looking at the satellite picture, we've got mostly clear skies over Bear County right now. The clouds were there this morning. They helped to keep temperatures from really bottoming out, but uh, now they sit just to our south. And temperature wise, 54 at the airport, 54 Randolph, 52 Bernie State, 60 in Castroville. And uh, we're rebounding now in Rock Springs, 52 there after starting off in the 30s and 40s. You see the clouds down to the south, Kennedy, Catula, Carrizo Springs dealing with some cloud cover. And uh, this should thin out some, I think, as we get into the afternoon. So less sun or less cloud cover, I should say, for those south of San Antonio. Uh, outside right now, we've got 54 degrees. Humidity is at 40 percent and a northeasterly wind at about seven miles per hour. Temperatures today should uh, reach the low 70s. Here around town and down to the south and west 60s in the hills 67 for Kerrville today and the dew point tracker shows we're we're dealing with dry air the air is extremely dry but it does uh, the dew point does start to ramp up as we get into tomorrow that should lead to some increase in clouds on your friday afternoon and then a lot more cloud cover over the weekend uh, we're looking for cloudy skies uh, I, I want to correct myself i said earlier that uh, baltimore was having weather and that's why they weren't getting the game off the today the opening opening day for baseball, but it's actually around Boston where Mark mentioned they're dealing with that cold rain, some snow too. So some weather up across the Northeast, that's uh, with that system that just came through our neck of the woods, just brought a front for us up there though, quite a bit of rain. Here's the next storm system, and this will be working through over the weekend. So as we go forward in time here, it's a weak system. There's not a lot to it, 
but there may be just enough moisture to uh, gin up a few showers on Saturday. That would be around 5 o'clock. Maybe a couple showers Sunday morning too. Anything we see I think is going to be pretty light. Uh, maybe some fog and drizzle to start your Easter Sunday too. And again, as we mentioned, uh, quite a bit of cloud cover. So 71 tomorrow, 68 though Saturday. 20% chance of an isolated shower and then some fog drizzle Sunday morning. 72, we go into the 80s Monday and Tuesday and maybe some spring-like thunderstorms by the middle part of next week. We are still in need of rain. I know it's not like a broken record here, but uh, we've got to get something going. Otherwise, it's not going to be a great summer. Okay, well, hopefully next week, Justin. Hopefully. Thank you. Right now we are 10 till 10. We'll be right back. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, a new study shows by the end of the century, summer weather could last six months. Katie Blake explains how longer summers could significantly impact our health and agriculture tomorrow at 9. And Transkai, let's see how things are looking here as we approach the top of the hour. Traffic looks fantastic out there at I-10 and I-35. Mr. Horn. It is 54 degrees. We'll be up around 72 today, mostly sunny. Pretty good day tomorrow, too. Lots of clouds over the weekend, but all in all, not a bad Easter weekend. Maybe a couple showers on Saturday. We were going to tell you a very complicated Easter recipe, but take your story and do this. Do this, okay? <laughs> Crinkle it up. Crinkle it up. Okay, okay. Throw it over your shoulder. I'm like how I'm folding it. Because, uh, that's so okay. nice. Okay. Uh, we have a message from some people you might know for your birthday. Aww. Oh. <laughs> Rooney. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Happy birthday. I just want to wish you a happy birthday. I love you. And I would love to sing you a happy birthday song. Aww. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, dear mama. Happy birthday to you and many more. I love you, mom. Bye. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, she skates right now. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. And Oriana, oh my gosh, thank you very think, much. Our producer aww. Oriana here with the happy birthday Steph cookie, <laughs> cookie cake. Oh my goodness. Yes, um, here you are. Your oh, husband Louise you. told us that cookie cake was your favorite. Yes, so. it is. Oh my gosh, you guys so are So feel so free sweet. to share or continue to social distance and don't share. <laughs> we, we, will, we will share safely. Oh my goodness, thank you guys so much. I, I am super spoiled. I, they've been spoiling me since. Uh, 4 30 a.m. this morning. Well, it was just balloons. Jesus, <laughs> no. impressed. Yeah. yeah. Songs, balloons, and uh, shout outs. We'll, we'll show everybody. Yeah, get the balloon. Yeah. Bring them over. Yeah, bring them on yeah. over. Here, let me hold something for you here. Yeah, so, so what looked like a tribute to Prince. <laughs> It's actually Stephanie's oh. uh, birthday balloons, and her favorite color is purple. So I love it. As we bring Justin in here. But anyway, from the whole GMSA family, including everybody behind the scenes, happy birthday, yeah. Steph. Oh, we do love you, you and uh, this should prove it. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys, too. I'm so happy we to be here. We hope you have an awesome day. <laughs> Thank you. Are it's, you coming back tomorrow, awesome. or are you going to okay. take the day off? No, I'm coming back tomorrow <laughs> to, <laughs> to thank you again. You, you could have run away. <laughs> Oriana, thanks for being a part yes, of it. Of course. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Everybody have a great day. And again, happy birthday, Steph. <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you, guys. We return you to normal programming. <laughs> normal programming. <laughs> Bye, guys.